I honestly thought last week's video was pretty wild, but this kind of takes the cake. Hi, my name is Sydney. Welcome back to my channel. This week in Australia, some weird things have been happening. I also noticed that I keep getting a lot of female-only advertisements for the Defence Force on my social media. So that's kind of weird. Anyway... In the last few days, the Australian state of Tasmania, which is here, had some crazy amendments pass the lower house for the Marriage Act. These amendments directly concern transgender people, discrimination, and of course, children. Because let's be fair, the left just can't seem to leave kids alone. Tasmania poised to become the first state to have gender optional on birth certificates. Oh, for God's sake. So at first glance, this probably seems kind of reasonable. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's not. The government was seeking to update the Marriage Act by removing the requirement for people to divorce if they change gender to recognize same-sex marriage. But Labour and the Greens seized the opportunity to attach nine amendments to the bill. Of course they did, and for anyone who's not from Australia or who doesn't care about politics here, the Labour and the Greens parties are the equivalent of the Socialist and Communist parties. They just have fancier names today. You're welcome. All nine amendments were aimed at removing the discrimination of transgender and intersex people in the Births, Deaths and Marriage Act. Mm, yeah. However, the amendment wording reveals parents would have to apply to the Registrar of Births, Deaths and Marriages for this to occur, making it effectively an opt-in system for those wanting their baby sex recorded. What fresh hell is this? I don't even, sometimes, I just, what is going on? Yep, you heard that correctly an opt-in system. Parents would have to apply to have their child sex recorded, meaning that this stops being a biological issue and becomes a government issue. Honestly, I keep saying it, all this stuff for me is just eroding biological sex and it turns this whole topic, this whole issue, into something that is paid for, stamped by, and authorized by government workers, which for me is deeply uncomfortable. I did quite a bit of searching trying to actually find these proposed amendments, but they don't really seem to be anywhere on the internet. Despite the fact that I could actually find the bill that they were introduced with, I couldn't actually find the wording of what these propositions actually were, which is, you know, like super shady. But then I came to find out that's actually because Labour and the Greens actually refused to make those amendments public which is still super shady. Here, however, is what I actually found in relation to the proposed changes. And if they're wrong at all, you know, full disclosure, it's because I couldn't find the original documents. So shoot me. So there are four main changes. The first one is that children below the age of 16 can change their sex on their birth certificate with a parent obviously doing that for them and a statutory declaration. The second one is children who are above the age of 16 can still change their sex on their birth certificate, but they don't need a parent to do so. They just need the statutory declaration. The third one is that it will become hate speech to not refer to someone by their preferred pronouns. And last, but certainly not least, the fourth one is that it is illegal to insult or I believe humiliate someone based on their gender expression. Ah, comforting. Ha <laughs> ha, hate speech. That old chestnut. In the interest of not having this video be like 25 minutes long, I'm gonna leave that one out of this uh, just because, you know, I probably won't be able to stop. Full disclosure, seeing any legislation like this really makes me mad because while we are trying to give one group of people rights and opportunities, in the end, we always inevitably infringe the rights of the wider population. In the video I made a couple weeks ago about the transgender community, I deliberately left out the discussion of children mainly because I think that transgender adults and transgender kids are two completely separate topics. Still have to. But in this case, sex isn't really something that you can opt in or opt out of. This isn't child support. <laughs> Sorry guys, that was mean. I wonder how many people that offended. You are whatever sex your chromosomes determine you to be. And like I said in my transgender video, this just looks like a bunch of crazy activists trying to erase biological sex. Sex is how medical professionals know how to treat you and know what you might have and know what illnesses you might be susceptible to. Sex is how paramedics determine how to treat you when they're on site with you. Changes like this to official documentation, in my opinion, will have huge ramifications further down the line. And the fact that this is about parents saying, or parents deciding for their newborn that that child does not have a sex, or that child can determine their sex further down the line, it sort of borders on legitimate craziness. Biologically, that child has a sex, 
and biologically, they can't choose what it is. It's not like picking your hair color where you can just change that at will. No, it's nothing like that. Obviously, I can't pull up any statistical data to validate what I'm saying because, you know, this stuff hasn't been happening for long enough. But what I can say is that there is plenty of holes in this idea. For starters, like I just said, a lot of people who practice medicine say that not knowing someone's biological sex makes it really hard for them to practice medicine on them. Let me just reiterate that because it's important. Even with me just doing a cursory search on the normal platforms I use, I found loads of studies that go through why sex is so important in medicine. And you know, because it's a no-brainer, men and women are different. You mean to tell me I'm, I'm different to, to men? What? The landmark Institute of Medicine report, exploring the biological contribution of sex, concluded that sex matters in all aspects of cellular function and physiology from womb to tomb. Epidemiological studies have consistently identified differences in disease incidence and prevalence between men and women. Patient health advocacy groups such as the American Heart Association, American Cancer Society, and the American Lung Association, to name a few, mount targeted campaigns to educate healthcare providers on sex differences in symptoms, outcomes, and mortality of specific diseases. This article itself is honestly pretty complex because it also goes in to make the distinction between sex and gender and how gender also influences medicine, which is super interesting, so I'll link it in the description. But I guess with what I'm trying to say, it still doesn't derail the fact that healthcare professionals need to know what sex you are in order to treat you. I know some of you are gonna be like, hey Sydney, it doesn't even affect these people if they can opt in and opt out of having their sex on their documentation because, you know, it doesn't even affect them until they actually get sick. Well, besides the fact that all of this is like, you know, genuinely confusing for children, and believe me, it is, it's also totally parent-driven. That being said, it also reinforces the idea that biology is malleable, and let's be fair, in this context, it's not. <laughs> it's pretty concrete. It's pretty, it's pretty unchanging. Realistically, a newborn is going to grow up to identify with its birth sex, regardless if you put male or female on its birth certificate, because the portion of the population who does not identify with their birth sex is a pretty little fraction, you know, between like 0.2 and 0.6%. That's not a lot of people. But when parents start to push this idea from birth, and when you start simultaneously introducing these ideas into schools, and particularly into primary schools with little children, and then when you give people provisions to change their sex on their birth certificate below the age of 16 or even at 16, you begin to run into some problems. So for starters, let's look at some legislation that is similar to the proposed Tasmanian legislation. In Britain last year, PM Theresa May wanted to move forward with some changes to the Gender Recognition Act. That's a mouthful. Mrs. May explained, We've set out plans to reform the Gender Recognition Act, streamlining and demedicalizing the process for changing gender, because being trans is not an illness and shouldn't be treated as such. A sex change would, as she promised, become a matter of choice rather than a diagnosis. I'm pretty sure even transgender people think that they have an illness. In this case, much like the Tasmanian legislation, in one stroke, sex and gender are being treated as the same thing. It's probably worth me adding that scientifically, sex is, you know, biology and your chromosomes, and gender is more like that intangible social stuff. I guess, uh, like little boys wanting to wear dresses and little girls wanting to play with Tonka trucks. I don't know. Again, much like Australia, the United Kingdom started teaching trans theory in schools. All schools, not just high schools, but primary schools as well. And like Australia, which saw a 200% increase in children identifying as transgender, the United Kingdom saw a 4,000% increase. In the UK, young people referred for gender treatment had increased from 97 in 2009 to 2,510 in 2017 to 2018. So, taking into consideration the fact that we are now teaching trans issues to five and six year olds, and above, and the fact that we're also allowing kids below the age of 16 to change their sex on their official documentation with a parent's permission, and kids above the age of 16 to change their sex on their official documentation without parent permission, isn't this kind of just the perfect storm? The phenomenon of transgender children growing out of their transgender identity by the time they are adolescents or adults is called desistance by gender researchers. For decades, follow-up studies of transgender kids have shown that a substantial majority, anywhere from 65 to 94%, eventually cease to identify as transgender. 
But honestly, things get really weird in relation to this. In one research article by Dr. John Whitehall, who's a pediatrician who's been pretty outspoken about this topic, he noted, one parent declared an infant had identified with its opposite sex at the age of nine months. But like, how do you even know that? At nine months old, the kids are still like Play-Doh faces. There's also plenty of information out there to suggest that gender dysphoria actually follows the onset of a mental disorder rather than precedes it. And when I say mental disorder, I'm talking about things like autism, ADHD, depression and anxiety, all those sort of things. In a Finnish study, for example, 68% of children had had their first contact with psychiatric services due to reasons other than gender identity issues. In the end, I'm not saying here that actual legitimate kids who are suffering from gender dysphoria shouldn't be able to access treatment. What I'm trying to get at is that there are so many holes in this decision-making process and legislation like this that it kind of makes no sense to proceed with it. I genuinely just think it's plainly ridiculous, absurd, and corrosive to bring in legislation like this that penalizes, for lack of a better term, the 99% of people who will end up identifying with their birth sex. The other thing that people never ever think about is legislation like this always opens the door for more extreme legislation that infringes the rights of everyday citizens. I know I sound crazy in conspiracy theory, but honestly, when extreme legislation like this comes into play, it always opens the door for more. And the funny thing about all of this is the left love to talk about the 99%, but for some reason, this is the only situation in which that doesn't apply. I get it, inclusion, whatever. It doesn't mean you need to take things this far. In the end, I just don't think that this has been treated the right way. I certainly don't think that the Labour and Greens parties have been upfront and honest with the population about what they're trying to do. And like I've said, there are so many issues that will inevitably come up with this sort of thing that I think it is a colossal waste of time, effort and energy. And there are probably better avenues to go down in order to make things easier or better for the transgender community. And obviously I didn't talk about this at all, but hate speech and things like offending people and legitimately putting those words into legislation, again, just leaves the door open to more ridiculous legislation and also infringing the rights of everyday people. But uh, let's be fair, politicians don't care about that. So what do you guys think about all of this? Let me know in the comments. As always, if you like the video, hit subscribe and the thumbs up button because that makes me happy inside. If you want to leave a comment, feel free to do so. Just don't be rude about it. And I will see you guys next time.